The holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. Whether you're making a traditional roasted turkey or spicy turkey tacos, your go-to shrimp cocktail, or your first Cajun risotto, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace your traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Choose from a great selection of digital coupons and use them up to five times in one transaction. Check our app for details. Baker's, fresh for everyone. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Tram is transcribed. Ellery Queen. <laughs> interest of a safer American home, a happier American community, a more united state. The American Broadcasting Company and its affiliated stations bring you Ellery Queen. I dedicate this program to the fight against crime. Not only crimes of violence and crimes of dishonesty, but also crimes of intolerance, discrimination, and bad citizenship. Crimes against America. Broadcasting Company presents another case in the career of Ellery Queen, celebrated fighter of crime. As usual, Ellery invites you to match wits with him as he relates the mystery. And before revealing the solution, he gives you a chance to solve it. Tonight, Ellery's guest armchair detective, who will represent you home armchair detectives, is the popular Hollywood columnist, Miss Sheila Graham. And now, Ellery Queen, your host for the next half hour. Thank you, Paul Masterson. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You've heard me investigate crimes in just about every imaginable place. Well, our crime tonight took place in the strangest locale of all, right on my own radio program. I call it... The... Stop! Oh. Ellery, hold on, will you? What's the matter, Paul? What is it? Ellery, you can't do this. You'll have to switch. Give us another oh, case. Oh, why? Murder on the Queen show? Are you crazy? You'll scare the bejinkers out of people, Ellery. They'll think it's actually happening in this studio yes, during the very, broadcast. Very good point, Paul. Yes, very good Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to be sure and keep in mind throughout the next half hour that you're listening to a case from the past, a crime that occurred a long time ago. Satisfied, Paul? Thanks, Alfred. <laughs> it's a case I've always called The Armchair Detective. Veteran Queen fans will recall that in the early days of our radio show, as today, I invited some well-known person to come to the studio and sit in the guest detective's armchair. Then, as now, it was usually fun. But on the night I had in mind, things didn't quite go in the usual way. That night, about 15 minutes before we were scheduled to go on the air... And... Everybody got the cuts? No, I think so. Still, how are we on time? We'll have to pick up 15 seconds, Ellery. Oh, Don't catch and fill the again. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. All right, coming then. Who is it tonight? Dr. Monty McKing. Who? You know, the college professor who has his own radio show. McKing's English. Oh, oh. oh. Correct English crusader. That's right. <laughs> Better brush up my grammar. <laughs> After you, Nicky. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Ah, here's Reporter again. Uh, Dr. McKing, Ellery Queen in the body. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do, sir? I'm almost afraid to answer, Dr. McKing. I might hang a participle or something. <laughs> Darling. Oh, Rosemary, I'm sorry. My dear, may I present Mr. Ellery Queen? How do you do, Mr. McKing? And uh, this character is my brother and business manager, Bud McKing. Oh, hello there. I uh, think our paths have crossed in radio. As a small business... Say, Ellery, seeing that we're pals, how about tipping Marty off to tonight's solution? Huh? Oh, sorry. Bird, <laughs> we are rebuffed. Yeah, <laughs> right. And, uh, oh, yes, sorry, Elsie. Uh, my secretary, Miss Woolen. Miss oh, Woolen. This is really a thrill, Mr. Queen. I'm a, I'm a died in the wool queen fan. <laughs> oh, why isn't that nice? Thank you, Miss Woolen. Oh, Dr. McKinley, we haven't too much time. Shall we go into the guest detective room? Oh, uh, Marty, oh. to sit in a special room, Mr. Queen. Right in here, Mrs. McKinley. Well, all right, isn't it? You see, we try to duplicate a whole atmosphere. Oh, Nicky, would you pour 
me a glass of water, please. My throat's dry. Oh, you know, you can't see the broadcast in this room. Oh, is that so? You just hear it, as you would in your own home. Program piped in here from the control room, Marty. You get it through that that loudspeaker. Oh, how interesting. Oh, so I see, but... At the uh, proper time, Mr. Queen, I take it I extemporize in that microphone above the table? Yes, Doctor. Yes, it's strictly an ad-lib spot. Immediately after my announcement on the air that I know who committed the crime, Nikki and I dash into this room from the studio, seat ourselves on the other side of the table from you, and then we hold a three-cornered post-mortem over the court. Not okay. Dr. McKinney's corpse, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Elsie, do I detect an unconscious secretarial wish to achieve my destruction? <laughs> I don't find that a bit funny. Don't come, Rosemary. But, Mrs. McKing, I didn't. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, right, Nikki, yes. I should explain no one's allowed in this room but our guest of the evening. So, Nikki, if you'll show the rest of Dr. McKing's party into the client's booth. Oh, certainly. Now, if you get thirsty during the broadcast, Doctor, here's a pitcher of water right on the table. Oh, oh yes, thank you. Oh, Phil. Yes, all right. How about a quick level? Whatever he's ready. Uh-huh. Say something into the mic, and if you all just a voice level, say. I left Dr. McKing alone in the armchair detective's room. We went on the air with our program, and in due course, I reached the point in our mystery where I was able to say. But, Ellery, do you mean to say? Yes, Dad. Now I know who committed the murder. My 
mind's a blank on the whole thing. But the minute we went off the air that evening, Ellery hurried back to the guest room to solve a very different kind of murder. The murder of his own armchair detective. No, no, no! I didn't, Inspector Queen. I didn't, I tell you. Mrs. McKinney, your husband's dying words were to search you. Well, you didn't find anything on me, did you? The idea of murder is ridiculous. Queen, my brother probably committed suicide. Impossible, but The poison that killed him comes only in liquid form, so it must have been in the container. And there's no poison container of any kind, either on Dr. McKinney's body or in this room. Inspector. Billy. I found it. Ah. The bottle's empty, Inspector, but smell it. Uh-huh. This is it, all right. Sergeant, where'd you find that bottle? On the floor of that glass enclosed booth where Miss McKing, Bud McKing, and Miss Woolen watched the broadcast, Maestro. The client's booth? Oh, Nicky, feeling better? Oh, yes, sir. Well, no one else was in that booth, Inspector, just his wife, his brother, and his secretary. So to simplify it. All right, you sure the water in this picture was okay when the McKing party first came in here with you and Nicky? Before we went in the air? Positive, Dad. Oh, Inspector, Ellery drank a glass full of it himself. So one of these three dropped the poison into the picture before Miss Porter escorted him out. Afraid we forced the poisonous hand, Nicky, by sending them into that booth. Mrs. McKay, it looked as if your husband had noticed you fooling around with that picture. If Marty had seen me drop poison into the water, would he have drunk any of it? Rosemary's got a point there, Inspector. He probably didn't get the significance of what he'd seen until he realized he was poisoned. But when he does realize it, he says to search you for the bottle. But why should I murder Marty? I loved my husband. I loved him dearly. Life won't be the same. I'll say it won't. Miss Woolen. What do you say? What did you mean, Miss Waller? Yes, go on, Elsie. Say it. All right, I will. Dr. McKing was the kindest husband in the world to her. And all she cared about was money. Money for clothes, furs, and jewelry. And when he had to close down her charge account, she... She poisoned him. Out of revenge, huh, Miss Waller? No, for his estate. His will leaves everything to her. That's why Mrs. McKing poisoned him. For his money. Well, Mrs. McKay? What can I say, Mr. Queen, that I'm innocent? I've already told you that a dozen times. True, I've been extravagant, and I was angry when Monty clamped down on me, but commit murder for money? The man I loved? All right. Come out with me a minute. Oh, yes, Dad. Shut the door. Well, shut it. It's shut, Dad. Oh. Well, these blamed radio doors. What do you think, son? I don't know. The king did put the finger on his wife. Well, it may have been no more than a stab in the dark, Dad. Certainly not enough to hold her on. I think I'll send her home. Have Beely come through the house on the QT. Might send Nikki home with her, too. Good idea, Dad. She could snoop out information where they wouldn't give out the time of day. Blast it. Sure, but what? Well, Dad, ever since McKing said search Rosemary, I've had the weirdest feeling that... That he meant something else? I don't know. I had the feeling there's a clue... A clue I've missed or forgotten. A clue that ties in with McKing's dying words. Maybe something that happened during the... Of course. You've got it? No, Dad. No, but I know where I can get it. Talk sense. Uh, well, they always make recordings for the Queen show, Dad. Now, you go ahead with your plans. I'm going to take a recording of tonight's show home and play it back. All night, if necessary. The spot that... Whatever it is. <laughs> Who is 
Now, this ought to be the spice cabinet. Spice cabinet. Just that clacker in my head, anyway. Old clothes, thyme, mace, marjoram, sage, basil, nutmeg, old ginger. Ah, look. Rosemary. Huh? Rosemary. An herb used in cooking. When he said search rosemary, he meant to finish a sentence. Or search rosemary jar in spice cabinet or something like that. Search rosemary jar? Well, I will search it. I might there'll be something in this jar, unless the searcher beat us to it. He missed it. There is. A wad of typewriter paper. Letters the king left it. What's it say, Ellery? Oh, dated ten days ago. Due to a recent disturbing episode, I am writing this note as a precaution. If anyone finds it, I am the only one who uses the spice cabinet, so it is safe against accidental discovery. It will be because they are investigating my murder. The other night, a certain person close to me threatened my life. Hey, I was inclined to at first dismiss it as hysteria. Now I am not so sure. If anything happens to me, the person who threatened to kill me was... Who, oh, Ellery? Come on, maestro. It's Elsie Woolen, my secretary. Signed, Monty McKing. Billy, get that Woolen girl down here. <laughs> tonight, I'm a little worried about occupying this post. Oh, oh you have nothing <laughs> to be afraid of. Uh, perhaps you'd like a glass of water to help you relax. Heavens, no! <laughs> well, that's the last thing in the world I'd want. Well, I can't say that I blame you. But now suppose we get down to business. Tell me, who do you think is the criminal in tonight's story? Well, it's very complicated tonight. Oh, sure. <laughs> but I think Miss Woolen, the secretary, did it. I see. And, uh, you... See, it, uh, well, it was a very subtle murder. Mm -hmm. It takes a smart girl to murder a man like that and took a lot of preparation. Secretaries yes. are usually rather smart, and, and she knew this man. And she knew uh, that he might get thirsty. He obviously got thirsty very often in his office. And also, he said that somebody uh, very hysterically threatened his life. 
yes. previously. You mean in the note he left? Yes, for in the him. note he left. Mm-hmm. And she was a very hysterical woman, so I think Miss Woolen did it. Thank oh, you very okay. much, Miss Sheila Graham. We'll find out in just a moment if your solution is correct. Now, here is Paul Masterson. A second great war has in the not too distant past drawn to a close. The magnificent, self sacrificing work of the International Red Cross will long be remembered. At home, the American Red Cross has always been on the job whenever disaster struck, whether it was a tornado, earthquake, fire, or flood. It is our duty and our privilege to help make the 1948 Red Cross campaign the best ever. The quota is set at $75 million. By giving to the Red Cross, you are giving directly to your relatives and friends and the armed forces and here at home. Let's make 1948 the banner year in donations to the American Red Cross. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. He's just too, too smart. Always knows the answer to mysteries. Well, I want to hear it. Mickey, pipe down. What have you got, Elry? Swelled head. Mickey. <laughs> it's all right, Dad. It's that crack on the skull. Well, now, what was Dr. Monty McKing's profession? What was he most famous for? His radio program. The King's English. An authority on the correct usage of the English language. Then let's take another look at that note we just found in the rosemary jar. I quote, Due to a recent disturbing episode, I am writing, and so forth. Uh, something wrong there, Maestro? Oh, Sergeant, due to in that sentence is hopelessly incorrect. Oh, it is, huh? It should read, because of a recent disturbance. I am writing. Well, due to can never be used adverbially. Is that so? And this, if anyone finds it, it'll be because they are investigating my murder. Anyone must be followed by he. One can't possibly mean the plural. Oh, uh, Miss Porter is with us again. Yes, Nicky. Another mistake. And this, I was inclined to at first dismiss... A split in penitent. A split in what? <laughs> in other words, this short note, purportedly from the pen of an authority on correct English, reveals not one, not two, but three of the commonest errors of usage. Incredible. Conclusion, Dr. McKing did not write the note. It's a phony. Uh, I mean, a forgery. And since the note was not written by Dr. McKing, it was not left in the rosemary jar by Dr. McKing either. Someone else left the note in the jar, obviously the real writer of the note, the forger. But, Ellery, why? What was accomplished by it? Well, a great deal, Dan. It made us believe that the word rosemary in Dr. McKing's dying statement, search rosemary, meant rosemary the herb rather than rosemary the name of a woman. And who gains by our thinking that the victim was not accusing a woman named Rosemary, but was merely telling us to look for a note in a spice jar? Only Rosemary McKay herself. She did poison her husband. Tried to twist his accusation of her to mean something entirely different, because she had a guilty conscience. So tonight, after I put her to bed, she forged her husband's signature to a note accusing Elsie Woolen then sneak downstairs, left the note in the rosemary jar as a blind... And then Nicky deliberately led us to that jar. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Led us to the jar, maestro? Well, by wrecking the kitchen, Sergeant. What was that but a clever device to draw our attention to it? To make us search it and find her plant in the rosemary jar. And then on her way back upstairs, she bumped into me in the dark and let me have it. But... Uh-huh, uh-huh. At that, Rosemary's attempt to lead us down a false trail might have succeeded. If only she'd learned from her victim the rules governing the English language. Well, here's where she learned something about the rules governing murder. Really? Oh, Rosemary McKing? For the murder of my armchair detective. (laughs) Uh, Yes, sir. And there, ladies and gentlemen, you have the solution to our mystery. Thank you again, Miss Sheila Graham, for serving as our guest armchair detective this evening. As mementos of the occasion, I have for you a copy of my latest mystery anthology, The Queen's Awards, 1947, and a subscription to Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine. Ah, Paul. Feeling all right? Well, I guess we're okay. There have been no calls yet asking if our armchair detective's really been knocked off. (laughs) And what are you worried about? Among other things, Ellery, next week. Never mind about next week. What's the matter, Nicky? What gives next week that it darkens the fair brow and brings lightning into those beauteous orbs? Why, Paul. <laughs> well, it's nothing, Nicky. I, I guess you bring out the poet in me. Paul. Oh. Nicky. Remember me? Go away. Uh, not you, Nicky. Yes, I remember you, Ellery Q. I remember that female, too. <laughs> what female? 
Vicky's referring to next week's problem, Paul. I'll say she was a problem. Uh, what was her, uh, I mean, its name, Ellery? Well, you were right the first time, Paul. I call her, uh, I mean, it. The Farmer's Daughter. saying good night until next week and enlisting all Americans every night and every day in the fight against bad citizenship, bigotry, and discrimination, the crimes which are weakening America. All names used on this program are fictitious and do not refer to real people, either living or dead. Among the members of tonight's cast were Larry Dobkin, Herb Butterfield, Kay Brinker, Alan Reed, Joan Banks, Bill Johnston, Charles Seal, Ann Morrison, and Joe Kearns. Music was by Rex Corey, direction by Dick Woolen, entire production under the supervision of Ellery Queen. Now, a listening reminder. For a hilarious combination of spring fever and spring house cleaning, listen when Willie Piper spring fever combats his wife's feverish energy on Tales of Willie Piper tonight. The preceding program came to you by transcription. The best time to plan for the future of your children is when they're small. That's the time to set up a nest egg for their education. And your banker will tell you that the best way to do it is to put the money... With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.